Hello. Welcome to another country. So, this is your first song? Yeah. Yes. How do you feel about coming here? Well, it's been, for me, it's been always a wish to uh, go to this country. The same as uh, it's been a wish for me to play in Italy. And we've never gotten the chance to do that in all those years. I don't know why. So, uh, this is uh, another country that I really wanted to, because I've been here for vacation, of course, obviously, because it's a beautiful country. Uh, but never got to play here, so I think this is for me like a second chance to now eventually do this. I'm so happy. So, in YouTube, there are some videos uh, containing songs uh, from the upcoming album. Uh, are you going to have any changes in the set list from country to country? Um, well, the whole. Um, the whole idea behind the set list is, uh, you know, is only based on I have so many songs that I can choose from and obviously I can't please everybody because then I would have to play for three hours or something like that. So, uh, we had like four days uh, to practice together because we've never played together. Even for the Resurrection Macabre recordings, everybody came in after each other so we never were actually as a band so we had never practiced together. No, never. Never. So we had just four days to to get a set list together, and uh, but um, hearing from so many fans uh, that they want to hear certain songs, of course, makes us uh, realize and think that we have to you know do something. But you know, it's been the tour is almost over pretty much, and everybody has been actually pretty happy with, with the set list because we touched about 50 percent of the new album and 50 percent of the older albums. So, Everybody's been really happy. So, apart from you, does any anybody contribute to the songwriting process? When I started writing new songs for the Pestilus album, um, obviously I was not in touch with the other Patrick. And, uh, you know, it's not like I can ask Tony Choi to fly over or Peter to come to practice or to stay have their own you know, lives and families and all that other stuff. So, um, back in the old days, it was like I always did make the music anyways. Uh, but we practiced the songs with the band, so that's, that's the only difference now. I still make all the music like I did in the past, only now we don't practice. I give them the song structures and then they work with that. So, uh, and then we put it together. And you don't really practice with the other guitarists? No. No, I mean, uh, I don't even have to explain any stuff, he just knows it and then, you know... That's a good game? Yeah, definitely, and it feels so good to have Patrick uh, back in the live setting because it almost feels like I haven't been gone, you know, it's, it's almost a testimony of the age lineup that we have, you know, except for, for Mark who's not there, I mean, uh, Peter on drums, which is, uh, makes a huge difference, uh, you know, in, in the whole festival thing because I think this is our best album. And I, I believe that there's a lot of people that you know don't think that way because everybody's got their own favorite albums. But I think this is such a tight album, like you must. Have. So about the lyrics now, uh, what are the main themes that you see and uh, in this album? And uh, is there any message that you'd like to pass through your music to the listeners? Well, this is the first album where I'm writing all the lyrics for. Uh, I've never written the lyrics, it was always done by Marco or, or Martin back in the old days. So I've never felt that I had to express myself that way. But since I had the difficult task of doing it for this album, I really wanted to touch more realistic topics. Uh, and m m modern day diseases, uh, you might want to say. Like, when I look around and see what's happening, you have a phone? No, I just have to. Come. Close it and then slowly carry it No, it's like I just want to touch, you know, topics that are like more realistic and what I see on TV, you know, all, those, all the terrible things that are happening that I want to address. So, so that's very nice what you are dealing with today, stuff and things that everybody cares for. Well, you know, I think I, I start to think that way uh, when I you know, became a, a, a daddy, you know, I got two kids. Then I know it's like, you know, wow, my kids are going to be living in this, in this crazy fucked up world. And you have to, 
you know, if, if, yeah, do something if I can reach anybody with my music and maybe they think about it a little bit more. You know, how we can be a little bit more nice to each other. Can I add something yes. about, the, about the line? Because you said that uh, you started writing songs. Uh, actually, you said it from the world of making new festivals. You seem to buy it. You seem to have to for these years. And how is it? Because I have seen that uh, you've been working in other projects. I've listened to say uh, 187. I was really good stuff. Yeah. Uh, but you didn't work as best years. How come you decided to get it back? And why are the differences in the lineup? Well, the. The, the, the thing is, is that, you know, um, I stopped playing music for for 15 years. I didn't really play anymore. I didn't play guitar or anything. So I didn't think that I was going to have uh, pleasure in writing new Pestles material. And when I came back with the, the C187 project, which I thought was an amazing album, because I worked with Sean Reiner on drums, which is God, you know, right there. You know, you got Tony Choi on bass. Right? And even uh, Tony Alenko, which I think is an awesome singer. It's brutal, but it was not received well by, by, by a lot of people. It did sell maybe 2,000 copies or something. Maybe because people expected something more technical. Well, I'm technical. That album was very, very technical for the style. Yes, and I thought it was a fresh style, but I think that, you know, my name is connected to Pestles. If I do anything else than that, it's like, you know, it's going to be picked up by death metal fans. And they didn't like C187 because it was too soft, so, you know, and that was the end of that, you know. So, um, I knew that I was going to work with Tony Choi again, who did the, the testimony. You uh, in the project, you've been working from the past. Yeah, yeah, from Testimony of the Ancients, he was there, he was the bass player there. And, you know, I just sent him an email and, and he was like, yeah, let's go for it, let's do it. You know? So everybody was you know what I with uh, yeah. the other place, yeah. 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 Well, he's in I don't Obscura. Know how to, I don't know how to pronounce it. No, he's in Obscura, you know. Yeah. And after uh, after Spheres, uh, the, ba the band was disbanded, so I was not in touch with him at all. So you know, everybody went their separate ways. So and I knew that I was not going to use Marco again for the just picture of Yeah, all right. And when I was composing the, the songs, I was using a Cubase, a drum computer, so, so at that point I didn't need a drum, I was just doing it, you know, and it took me a year to, uh, to come up with good music, and then from there on I started thinking, well, who can I ask for, for the drummer, and I wanted to have Derek Roddy, and he was too busy, He's such a busy guy, and yeah, I couldn't get in, so... That was the end of that, and then the, the next best thing is, is Peter's. Yeah, I think Peter's, Peter's is awesome, and I think he fits even better to this, to this music. I saw the video that was posted in the sites, it was amazing. Yeah, he's very good. They're all good musicians. All